Okay, let's take a look at problem four now, writing geometric sequences as functions. It says up here, you, you can also represent a sequence by using function notation. It allows you to plot the sequence in terms of n and a sub n, where n is x and a sub n will be y, our alphabet. Where n is the term, the term number, and a sub n is the term. So it says the geometric sequence has an initial value of 6 and a common ratio of 2. Write a function to represent the sequence. Graph the function. So if I have it, I know that a sub n, a sub 1 is 6. My um, ratio is 2. And I have n minus 1 or x minus 1. Change it to f, x minus 1. And so my function f of x equals 6 times 2 to the x minus 1 represents the geometric sequence. I can plot points. I can graph it. My free graphing calculator at www.desmos.com equals 6 times 2 to the x minus 1. Oops. Let me put this in parentheses. Okay. And so this is the same graph that they got as well. We can plot a few points if we want. So, um, I might have to zoom out a little bit. We can actually add a table. There we go. And we see the same points here. So if I plug in 2, I get 12. Plug in 3, I get 24. If I plug in 4, I get 48. And I plug in 5, I get 96. Okay? Alright, so now let's look at guide number 4. It says a geometric sequence with the initial value of 2 and a common ratio of 3. Write the function to represent a sequence. So if I write it first as a sequence, my initial value is 2, and my ratio oops, is 3. And so f of x would be 2 times 3 to the x minus 1. If I graph it, I have f of x equals 2 times 3 to the x minus 1. I'm sorry. And so I can graph it and then I can also um, add the chart to see the different values. Oops. And I can continue on in my values if I need to. As you can see, these are fraction values here. Um, and I hope that this helps.